Thank you all for joining me this morning. I know we're trying to stay safe from the storm, but um, this is our second PLC meeting. And um, I am just grateful that you all agreed to meet me this morning. Last time we didn't really get a chance to do any norms. So I just wanna maximize our time and go ahead and jump into that. Um, let's start out with establishing some norms for our meeting times with this PLC. So anyone want to start with a norm that you think would be important, important to our meeting time? Well, I think maybe one that um, you would think we probably don't have to do, but we usually establish all of our students to share the air, to be able to be um, respectful of, of um, you know, people speaking, especially since we're not in the same room. Okay. I would say respect each other's time. Okay. You know, and make sure you're focused on what's going on here versus around you. Okay. I would say um, be engaged. Like, don't just get on and look at everybody. Yeah. But participate in the conversation. Anyone else? I think I'm prepared to, I think Catherine, knowing what the goal of the group, the PLC is. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So we have share the air, respect each other's times, be engaged and come prepared. Mm -hmm. Everyone good with those? Yes. All right, so moving right along. Um, you have some data in front of you, and my vision for this PLC is to improve um, the EOC scores in the school. So what I've given to you is some state data for EOC, um, our school data, and then the district data as a whole. I included that because we have some of the, um, middle schools that give like the English one and algebra one EOC. So um, I know you've had it for just a minute and um, have been able to look over it. So one of the things I wanted to do was look at what do y'all consider a cutoff for us considering our scores low? Um, is it, if it's, under 50%, 60, you know, what is it that you consider low? I, I would say um, if it's below passing, it's low. And just if you kind of reflect back on, you know, our, our EOC scores kind of across the board, um, on underperforming years, we were um, still around the passing range, which would be you know, 60% in this state. So if it's below that, I would think that would be uh, low. And of course, depending on the test too. Okay. Yeah, and I would agree that we would want it to be, we would at least want to meet the state mean. Right, right. Yeah, I also think that like looking at our mean, like it's all, passing but looking at our failure percentage and that is so high so that's another concern I think is we're in the 40s mm -hmm. for like our failure percentage um, even though our mean is passing mm -hmm. so that's like another aspect I guess and so that means we have a big gap right mm -hmm. between the highs and the lows yes yeah I would agree with that so what do we what do we think are some um, causes for that gap? And you see, um, we have there. I included for the state and for our school um, the demographics for the people that were test students that were tested. And just based on if we think about um, like benchmark data, some of us have a lot of benchmark data. You know, getting to the test. Um, what what could be some issues around that disparity? 
for math, I mean, it's ultimately like being able to do word problems. I mean, the kids just want an equation and solve it. They don't want to read. And, and I think the reason is, is because they don't, when they read it, they don't know what information they need. And then what information is just there just to trick them. So they immediately just look for numbers and try to do something. And sometimes that number is just a year or how many people in the class and it's irrelevant and they don't know how to determine what is useful and what is just there just because. Yeah, I, I would agree with um, Ms. Dennis that, you know, if, if we're looking at <clears throat> probably one of the key factors, um, certainly with U.S. history, uh, most of it is reading. I mean, most of it is um, uh, you're going to have to try and gain, number one, what's being asked, number two, you know, determine, you know, the meaning of certain words, and three, you know, try and find a theme with, with the question. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they have to just, on its face, understand what's even being asked. So, again, that's that's an issue for U.S. history. I would imagine English. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to add on to, like, a specific example of what Matt's saying is, like, when you talk about literacy in terms of vocabulary, like, if you ask the students on the U.S. history EOC, you know, something that led to women's voting rights, they would easily know that. But if you ask what led to women's suffrage, like when you throw that different vocabulary in, they're not always as familiar with it simply from a literacy aspect. Mm -hmm. okay. I definitely think it's like the words, the wording of the EOC that our kids aren't familiar with. Um, and that leads to getting answers wrong when they know the content. But on the biology, that's, um, they're having a similar issue as well. Um, we always hear them say, well, that's not the way it was worded in class or, or, you know, that's not the way it was worded on the handout. So mm -hmm. being able to read a question and still recognize that they do know the content is obviously an issue um, across the board. Mm -hmm. so, so are there any other... Um, things that stand out to us that might be an issue with us having such a large failure rate? I think, you know, just as far as what we were just discussing, I mean, we're, we're, we're all kind of saying the same thing. And, and I know even with our school, there's been a, been a big push this year to improve, um, you know, understanding through, lit, you know, literacy programs. So I think that's a, um, a huge issue on all the EOC tests. So, you know, that, that may be one, you know, huge underlying uh, issue that's causing you know, our scores to be where they're at. Mm -hmm. Well, that came up in a department head meeting Monday, actually, um, when we were talking about the Bearcat time and how having students read, even if it's not the whole 40 minutes, but 20 minutes every day, there's been some research around how that improves yeah. um, go ahead um, and that's what I was gonna say like just when you think about literacy and stamina um, mm -hmm. and like on all these tests like even math when they see a word problem and it looks like a big chunk of text they just shut a lot of kids just shut down mm -hmm. so they're not even gonna try like April said to fish through mm -hmm. it and figure out oh I do know how to solve this and I think like you're talking about the Bearcat time, just building that literacy stamina of being able to read for extended periods is helpful for them. That was one thing. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Jason. Um, when I was thinking about adding even SSR like into my daily like English classes, um, especially with, EO, with English one, having the EOC is that's like the main problem with students or like that's the trend that I saw when I was like doing research on testing strategies was students just they do get to text and they just try to answer the question with, because they don't want to read through the passages because they're taught like they don't have that stamina and I mean I was surprised that even on the first day like students couldn't couldn't get through like five to ten minutes of reading of just sitting there and reading like they they physically couldn't sit there and do it because they were tired, they were distracted, they don't, they don't, they're out of practice. And so I think doing it during Bearcat, and I'm doing it especially by English One, doing it during like the first 15 minutes of class and then doing a reading comprehension question with it. Um, I've seen like improvement. I mean, we've only been doing it 
for two weeks now, but I have seen like students improving in that. So I think that would be extremely helpful. It's just that st building that stamina to take a longer test like the EOC. Yeah, I, I love that y'all are using um, that word stamina because, uh, you know, I, I guess I couldn't come up with the right word, but this is exactly what I'm seeing out of mine. Um, is I have this kind of the same plan and, and I, I, I co-teach my Bearcat class and it's a large class and, and it's hard for them to stay focused, but they, they can for a smaller period of time. So I'm thinking the same thing as y'all. I, I really want to see, you know, a, a 15 or 20 minute section dedicated to SSR every day just for, like you, you said, um, Casey and Catherine, just building stamina, not just to, you know, establish the, the, you know, enjoyment of reading just for personal satisfaction, uh, you know, in an educational game, but, um, you know, for, uh, I guess more, uh, I want to say selfish reasons, but I want to see them do better on my tests. I mean, I want that to be their goal to do better on all four of these tests. So, um, stamina, that's, that's a great word. And, and I, I'm glad Sherry to hear that y'all are kind of looking back at that at, in the department head meetings, because, um, you know, I think it's crucial in every subject area. I mean, every subject area to have, you know, a time set aside for, for, you know, either SSR or, or shared reading, um, you know, or some, some version where they're focusing just on, you know, building literacy through reading. Mm -hmm. And probably a more focused um, reading in the content areas with, like for you having them read, um, articles and, and or whatever, however it's done on the EOC, you know, instead of just reading a book, like you said, for personal enjoyment, more content focused reading might help. I know with um, science, sometimes even when I'm working something out on the board and I write the problem, I have to underline what is important, you know, just going back to those elementary skills and, and just having them underline or put a box around what is the important information here. And, and with the, even in my AP class, because that came up in an department head meeting too, how it's not just EOC that we see an issue with, but um, the reading skills and are, um, we're seeing the problem with the reading skills in the AP classes. And sometimes even in AP chemistry, I have to tell the students, they've given you a lot of information, but what is it here that you need and what can you do with what they gave to you? And just, always going over that with them, helping them to read through those questions. So that's definitely um, an issue and that did come up in the um, department head meeting. So um, go ahead. Sorry, one thing that to go along with the literacy, like with the EOC being on the computer, hopefully like at some point in time, this is something we can kind of take back to our department, um, is finding a way for the kids to do reading passages on the iPad because like you were saying underlining and it's I mean I remember when I was doing the praxis I failed the computerized English part every single time I paid paid for it five or six times and failed it but then when I did the paper part passed it with flying colors and I think part of our kids because we don't at least not in my class with math we don't do a whole lot of testing on a computer so changing from a computer literacy to paper literacy like, I think that also affects our testing scores because it's just, it's much harder to analyze a word problem on a computer, especially like with English with Bryant and them, it, one page is the passage, the next page is the question and having to flip back and forth. So I would like to somehow find a way to maybe put that into Bearcat time. I don't know if you can do that on the iPads or not, but I think we need to also leave the a, a physical book and go to some kind of computerized in our in our Bearcat time just to work on that. And that is one thing that like one reason besides the fact that we have limited copies of House on Mega Street but that we're with my English ones I'm doing House on Mega Street as a PDF like I just use the PDF version and put it in their iBooks and have them download it so they're getting used to underlining and annotating passages on their iPad so it's on a computer screen because that's a April I struggled with that too even like today taking tests on the computer um I'm a pencil and paper like test taker I do better that way but um that is one thing that I think that it was just kind of 
happenstance that I did it with House on Mango Street, but I like your point there of like, we really do need to teach them how to read on a computer. Like it, there is a difference and we don't think about that in the day to day. Or I didn't. I'm sorry. Go ahead. A hundred percent. So is there, is there a way to go ahead and do that, that we can put that in place now? I mean, I know, um, you know, Catherine and I have talked about those and just, um, you know, the costs of, um, you know, buying, buying hard copy texts. Um, and we're, I guess, in the middle of, of buying, I think we're going to be able to buy two additional sets for one classroom with some, some money we received. Um, but again, you know, the cost effectiveness of it, with a continued, um, I guess, long-term um, literacy program, you know, I guess there's side benefits besides just learning and take tests on a computer is that we could, you know, always have accessibility to, to books online, but I'm, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to depend on y'all to, to, I guess, maybe see some of those, not, not saying I can't research that, but, um, you know, there's gotta be some, some easily accessible resources just through iPad since they all have one-to-one -one technology. Well, are there any, does anyone know of any programs that are already set up like that where we could take to administration, you know, and say this program specifically helps students to, um, you know, read the questions and, and answer questions online and it's kind of tailored to EOC questions? Like, I mean, I know we have the USA test prep, but I mean... I don't know. I mean, I would have to do research on if there's any other thing out there and that might be something we can research. I think we're supposed to have another meeting in the next couple of weeks with you or whatever. And I'm, maybe that's something we, we need to challenge ourselves is to start researching now. I mean, I'm in an AP community. I mean, I'll, I'll ask around my AP community to see if there's anything they use for AP wise. I know that we have hard copies with AP, but I'm sure they have connections that they may know something. And then maybe we have some, ideas to come to the table next time we meet just an idea yeah and paula told me about two last year i can't remember the names of them i have them written down somewhere um that are good like you were talking about using sort of like nonfiction text in like history and science this and they sort of have the text and then questions that emulate sort of the eoc type using text evidence mm -hmm. i just have to go back and mm -hmm what those sites are. Okay. I think Ms. Breen knows them. I was talking to her yeah, about that did. as well, and I can't remember it either. Okay, well, hopefully we'll go back to school next week and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and be able to find that information. Do y'all agree that um, after looking at the data, I don't know if we said this earlier, but there wasn't a big difference amongst the race where it um, listed all the different races and their performance. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a big difference. I just think it's an overall problem and, and there's not one subgroup that that has a big need. Marginal, yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Okay. Um, do y'all think that there was anything that changed over the last couple of years outside of literacy that could have caused the data to decline? I know attendance is an issue. Anything else? you know, that y'all can think of that you've seen? I, I, I know as a, um, as a reworking of the EOCs, uh, you know, we had a, a statewide decision to change the grading scale um, two years ago. And, um, you know, it went from 93 to 100 to the seven point grading scale to a 10 point grading scale. And the year uh, that that was implemented. I mean, we, we did terrible, um, you know, so I, I don't know, you know, how you, how you gain a larger window and we do much, much worse. So I think there's been some changes in the testing. Um, you know, it's kind of some of the consensus in the social studies department, but we rebounded the next year and did, you know, absolutely fantastic, I guess, better than we had in about four years, just across all subject areas. Um, so, you know, as far as a, a specific, um, you know, indicator of, of um, you know, why we might be doing good and bad. I, I, was, I guess I didn't suggest that. I'm just saying there, there was a trend of, you know, a huge wave in there when they reworked the tests and the grading system. Okay. 
I think with the math, I think they went to a lot more word problems. And I think that's what hurt us is it used to be a lot of just apply drill and kill type thing. And then I think they started throwing in a bunch of those crazy word problems. And like Catherine and I've said earlier, they just pretty much saw that and was like, Oh, I'll just click that and move on. Like they didn't even want, they don't even want to attempt it. Even in my stats class, which is full of word problems and scenarios. They're like, uh, I'm just going to guess. Like it's just, it's a complete unknown. So they just get scared and run. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do y'all think will be our next steps? I think um, the, the follow up with, uh, you know, literacy online or literacy programs online, I think is definitely, you know, a great next step. And also, I guess with, uh, you know, our, our library, I know we have around $13,000 for, I guess, new books. And if there is a cost to, you know, um, I guess, sending out programs to the, all the iPads, I mean, maybe that could be, you know, partially taken out of those um, funds for new books. I think another, something else that we could do, um, and it seems simple, but I struggle to do that too, is like making sure that we're structuring our tests or quizzes like in a way that is, if not exact, but like very similar to the EOC um, and the way that they word their questions. Because I think that like we know that our kids know the content, but if it's not worded, if they're not used to seeing it that way, then they're going to like freak out or not be ready for the next like question or passage or whatever. So it's also just a simple, and that's challenging myself too, is like making sure that I'm wording the questions like they will see it on the EOC, I guess. Okay. Those are good. Anyone else? Well, before we end, I was wondering if um, everyone would just think about some research-based strategies that uh, work well with your um, content area, and maybe we could talk about that next time. Did y'all hear me? I, I, I lost you. All right, some um, strategies that research-based strategies that work well in your content area, and we can talk about that next time. I think I'm out of time. Sherry, I, I didn't hear. Can y'all hear me? Yes. I said, I think we're out of time. Okay. Thank y'all for meeting with me and we'll follow up next week. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.